out there on the other side of the issue, and he was uh, pro-abortion. I was marching down the streets of Little Rock and passing a constitutional amendment in my state, as well as many pro-life pieces of legislation. And uh, long before he ever uh, even was pro-life, I was pushing the Human Life Amendment. So uh, where Mitt comes up with that, I have no idea. You'll have to ask him how he, how he can manufacture such, uh, uh, such ideas. to 48 for those of you who missed it. Yeah, yeah. Three overtimes. No, no, nobody in this crowd missed that. That's okay. no. We did it for everybody in the country. We did it for all the SEC and all the other Southern teams. That's why we did that. It was a gift to South Carolina as well as Arkansas. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because we know that everybody's been on the other end of that LSU deal yeah, before. Yes, they have. So. Too many times. Reaction to the folks who criticize you say events like this and your commercial with the I take the issues very seriously, but one of the problems we have today in politics is that sometimes people running for office don't take the issues seriously, they take themselves seriously. Too much so. Uh, you know, this country is not about just its, its elected officials, it's about the people that we're supposed to serve. And sometimes people forget that they're to serve the people, not the people serve them. And, uh, you know, we, we would maintain a very serious focus on every one of the issues. But when it comes to the whole point of the campaign, I think people appreciate uh, that we're trying to make sure that we remember that there's a lot of things to celebrate in America, uh, our freedom. And sometimes uh, the simple things to celebrate are since we You know, there's not many places uh, where people live on this earth where they can be as happy as Americans can be. And there's still something to be said for that. So we're, we're going to have some fun throughout the campaign, and I think that's what uh, will help us to win when it's all over. Governor, what's it like to have this guy on your right with you? It's a whole lot better having him with me than having him against me. And so we're very proud to have Rick here. He is an icon in South Carolina, but just all over the country, and uh, delighted that he is uh, endorsing me. I think it's a, you know, just a, another sign of people that have been all over the country, all over the world. They, they, you know, you, you can say what you want to about Rick as a wrestler, but he's also a world traveler, somebody who has seen life at every level. And uh, it means something to me that he's had a chance to look at every candidate and he's chosen to support you. And I appreciate it very much. And he'll get you in a chokehold if you don't agree with it. So go. <laughs> Governor Beasley. Governor Beasley. Yeah. Governor Beasley. Why are you supporting this candidate? <laughs> well, as y'all know very well, South Carolina is a very critical primary state for the Republican primary process. And so my wife and I had been sitting on the sidelines, and after watching some of the debates and watching Mike perform, we decided, even though we know all the candidates running, that Mike Huckabee is, is a candidate this country needs. They need a leader that's strong. Mike Huckabee has proven himself. He is a proven consistent conservative. He's not a Johnny come lately to our issues. He is strong. He's proven himself in the debates. He's proven himself out there meeting with voters one-on-one. -on -one. We're seeing the a momentum take place, a groundswell of support from the American people, not from Wall Street, not from the Beltway Bandits, from the American people, standing strong and coming forward and supporting Mike Huckabee. We've seen it in Iowa. We've seen it in New Hampshire, and we're going to see it in South Carolina. And I'm looking forward to South Carolina being a, a Mike Huckabee state, just like it was for George Bush and many of our candidates beforehand. Governor, I'm last week or so, you know, some of the key things people were talking about is Pakistan and, and what's happening in Lebanon and the uncertainty of that leadership. Mm -hmm. Are there any thoughts you have on either of those issues or how you might handle those either similarly or differently from how the president's handling Well, we put $10 billion into uh, Pakistan, supposedly to hunt down terrorists in September 11th. We can only account for about a billion of them. I think we need to hold the Musharraf government far more accountable for the way that money has been spent. Uh, we have a serious issue on the uh, Kurdish-Turkish border. Uh, one of the things that makes a lot of sense is to make sure that while we don't militarily intervene on that border, there are also ways in which uh, giving the Kurds uh, the opportunity to take care of the PKK, the dissident group within the Kurdish territory, uh, keeps Turkey from having to invade, and it would mean a great deal more to the security of that region. So. Um, 
United States has to militarily intervene in every situation. In some cases, the nationals have the capacity to deal with these issues. What they need is our assistance, not necessarily military. We need to remember that the next terrorist attack will likely be postmarked Pakistan. I mean, that's where uh, we'll likely see the, the, the origins of a terrorist attack given Osama bin Laden's uh, whereabouts. Uh, but we need to have a greater sense of accountability, not just for our money, but we also need to make sure that we're clear that if we think we've got an actionable target in Pakistan, uh, that we'll take action on that target. American people, that's the foremost thing we need to be worried about. Well, the, 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 the sovereignty of the United States is the single most important sovereignty the American president has to deal with, and the safety of the American people. And certainly we'd like to have the cooperation of Pakistan, and I think we sh should have it and will have it. Uh, but if there is an imminent threat to the American people, then I think it's uh, the responsibility of, an, of, of a president of this country to do whatever he has to do to protect you, me, and the rest of us standing here today. Governor, is there a, is there a defining principle of our health care policy you know, the U.S. internationally, given your experience, how would you well, I certainly don't believe that the United States government is a missionary organization and it's, that its primary purpose is to uh, export democracy by forcing it on people who have not yet chosen to make it their own particular form of government. And the best way to create the appetite for democracy in other parts of the world is to have a strong version of it here, to make sure that we have a safe, secure, prosperous, uh, strong, uh, very uh, capable country with an incredibly strong military that's capable of uh, protecting our citizens with secure borders and with a prosperous infrastructure here. When we have that kind of nation, it'll be the envy of the world. It has been. It is the envy of the world. And uh, more than anything else, we prompt the hunger and thirst for what we have when we have the best version of it. to struggle, who realizes there are people in South Carolina who aren't sure they'll make it past Friday with their jobs, uh, that wonder whether their kids will be able to go to college, and if their eight-year-old breaks his arm on the playground, can they afford to get it fixed? You know, it's the simple, basic, bread-and-butter issues that, that matter, but they want to know that their neighborhoods are safe, their borders are secure, they want to see a tax structure that actually does, that, that doesn't penalize their productivity, as the current tax system does, and instead will enable them to, uh, you know, to prosper. And, and do the best they could for their families. Would you say that the fair tax is your top, your top yeah. Yeah. Well, the fair tax is absolutely the best way we can transform not just the tax system, but the American economy. Getting rid of the IRS, uh, ending the penalty that we currently have on productivity, and freeing the American economy, bringing manufacturing jobs back. The fair tax is the best vehicle to do that. But would that be your top You know, one of the problems is that when you say the top one, all of these issues are integrated. One of the big mistakes that people make is to isolate and compartmentalize the issues. Strong energy policy, education, health care, secure borders. All of that fits in together in terms of leadership. And as a governor, one of the things that I do understand is that when you start compartmentalizing the issues and say, we're all going to put them in pieces, you've lost the battle because the battle is sewing them together and keeping them integrated as one great, wonderful movement toward improving the lives of the people that you're serving. I support a constitutional amendment to uh, affirm human life from uh, the point of conception to natural conclusion. Rather than talk about what it bans, this country is always built not on what it bans people, but what it bans the government to do. What it should do is to affirm the value, the intrinsic worth of every human life. So the purpose of the amendment is not to stop something, it's to give something the opportunity to start, and that's human life. Our founding fathers understood it. They said that all of us are created equal, endowed by our Creator, with certain inalienable rights, and among these, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. The point is that we would go back to the origin of our founders by that kind of
Affirmative Amendment that recognizes that everybody, regardless of their IQ, their race, whatever, that all have equal value and worth, and that's what that amendment would do, and that's why we need it, because it's a, an issue that really defines who we are as a civilization. among the Republicans. I, I mean, I believe, first of all, we have to have a secure border. That's the first priority. We shouldn't have amnesty or sanctuary cities, and we should put a greater burden uh, to make sure that employers don't pay a penalty when they knowingly hire illegals. So I, I think that's pretty well uh, where most of us are, and I think it's where most of the country is. We're not against immigration. We're just wanting to make sure that it's legal and that people do it the right way. How confident are you now, Governor? Is the long shot become a long shot? <laughs> I don't know about that. I just think it's a matter of the message is connecting with ordinary people. You know, the people are looking for a president that they feel like comes from who they are, not an elitist, not somebody that's that's really never experienced struggle and, and challenge. And I think, if anything, people around this country are looking and they're saying, you know, here's a guy that understands life like we've lived it and uh, will take that kind of principle to the White House and will govern from that perspective. That's why we're doing well. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming. Yeah, right. Thank you. I think so. Practice on a few mallards in Arkansas this morning before I came over. Jerry Luck? Yeah, we got 14. No, did you Ten greenheads and four wood ducks, so we did all right. Four of us. When did y'all's season come in? Last Saturday. Last Saturday. We're a week into it. Yeah. We come in Thanksgiving weekend. Is that right? Yeah. I saw, oh, Chip, a big friend of Joe Taylor's, and he said they got... Ten. Was it ten? They, oh, did it really? Yeah, he said they limited out by 7.30. I thought, man, y'all did good. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you can find a place of water in South Carolina, then yeah, you're, you're, you're doing, doing well. Because you don't have it. Water's your problem now. Yeah, we, we have an extreme dry. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's bad. Yeah, so, but that but, means but, where there's water, there's they, ducks. They, they, they know where to go. Yeah, That's if you can right. find them, you've got them. You've got a hunting yeah. 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 I hunted uh, down in Arkansas yeah. County. You're stuck by Arkansas. I came over here. John, he and Spur are buddies. I like to have them score a couple times, but they're going to score 35 points today. We are 34 for sure. What do you think? What is your presence add to the campaign? What is what? What is your presence add to the campaign? Well, I think the governor touched on the side of politics and a lot of people don't talk about it, and that's that he likes to see people enjoy life. There clearly are the hardline issues he has to deal with every day, like he just spent 30 minutes doing right there, but he's able to walk out, meet people that may never see a man of his stature ever in person. Coming to a game like this and join, even though he's from Arkansas, <laughs> he lowered himself to come to South Carolina. <laughs> you just remember that the first part of Woo Take Suey is yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Kind of bad. I guess that was a bad word, but I mean, right now they're, they're, they're making SEC look great, and uh, we're just honored to have him here in South Carolina. He's a great man, and I think anybody that had a chance to hear him speak in the last 15, 20 minutes, a quality person, self made, great family man, he's got some really good, has a great vision for our country. So, Rick, Rick, you know, and I'm here to excite the crowd. Woo! Let's hear it for Mike Huckabee! Oh, I am for sure. Don't think I won't. Great to meet you. Great to meet you.